due to the blue area of the moon, an area that for some reason you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. There's a, a thing at the beginning, he like, talking about cashier's rib round. Uh -huh. It's like, and 10 makes 100, he's going a bunch of ones. He goes, be sure? Call me a crook? So he knocks up a of alcohol and he's like, we're even. <laughs> Welcome to Comic Pal, I'm Eric. I'm Dan. <laughs> and and uh, this week, uh, we're going to be doing one of our uh, regular pals like we used to do um, on uh, with the text before. Yep. And uh, this week, I went with 231. I went with Saga 9. I was like, I need to look at the number. <laughs> Saga 9. Um, so uh, since we haven't, we didn't do it uh, for a little while, we, we kind of, uh, anything was open for the past two weeks. Yeah, like Saga. Uh, like Saga. Um uh, for me, it would have been Saga, Batman, uh, or or Chu, and I decided to go with Chu. Um, I thought it was a it was a great return of uh, Tony Chu. Yeah, Tony yeah. with a Y. Yeah, he was uh, he was trying to be a well. He, I mean, he's got the the vengeance angle now. Yeah, yeah. I I I, th I thought that the the previous um, arc Space Cakes. Mm -hmm. I thought it was funny. Yeah, it was. Um, I liked that they kept um, going back to Caesar and uh, Tony having met Tony with an I. Great running gag. Um, having met each other all the time, but they're always drunk or something, except for the last one where they were kids, so they didn't remember, you know. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. However, it was kind of a bummer to just have um, Tony in, in uh, the hospital all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Major League Chew was kind of fun, and then Space Cakes, I mean, it's just kind of, eh, you know, like, Tony Antonell is, is a, a good character, but she's not Tony Chu, you know? And, yeah. and and we also lost sight of the, uh, you know, the weird alien writing, the right. the, the chicken right. stuff. Like, it just kind of, it was like a little diversion just to set up, uh, I guess, the, the, the future of the, the second half. Right. And I and I thought that um, um, even even Major League Chew, well, actually, so so after Major League Chew and now into Space Cakes, one of the things that was missing that I loved the most was there was no there was no um, office yeah. um, FDA scenes. Stuff, yeah. So so I, I was loving anything at the FDA, anything at uh, where was Colby USDA the USDA. Yeah. Uh, I love all the the little post it notes and and uh, stuff that they put in the background. Uh, I love their bosses. I love I love how Colby has had to sleep with both bosses. Well, and, and, and you know, in, in those early uh, early arcs, I felt like there was a little bit more seeded before, and then you'd get to the end, and you'd be like, holy crap, like, you see that little guy from that island nation and the little weird fruit, you saw it, like, many issues before it actually became a thing. Like, it was this sort of tight plotting that we we didn't have so much in Space Cakes. I mean, it, um, it is, because, like, I guess the, the you know, you have the running gag about when yeah. they met and all that. <coughs> it isn't, it isn't. It wasn't the same sort of thing. I, I haven't, but I also haven't been, I've read those in trade, so maybe that's part of it. Well, the, and the other thing that I thought was interesting is that um, Chu starts out um, pretty hilarious, leaning pretty hard on the on the comedy. Um, you've got um, this guy whose boss just hates him. You know, so anytime he can get him to eat poo or dead humans or whatever, he sends he sends Tony over. And then I, I feel like um, Major League Chu was kind of the turning point, mm -hmm. where where uh, while each individual issue is still funny, um, the the series as a whole has taken a, a harder turn for the dramatic. Yeah, it's, it's darker. It's uh, it's more serious. Um, so, and then, and then, so we get to this issue, uh, it starts off with, uh, Antonel's funeral, mm -hmm. uh, interspersed with, um, clips from, um, his wife's funeral, Tony Chu's wife's funeral. Right. Um, and I think that, that, um, John Lehman had a really tough task, which was to start it off with the grieving and then get us over to where, um, back into the funny. Yeah. Because, because... The first third, the first seven pages of this book is is the funeral. Mm -hmm. the The second third is back to the usual hilarity. You know, you get the little intro um, black black panel where it's, it gives you you know here's what's going on with this crazy powers in this universe that I've created, and then it just goes on to these people who created this this um, formula that that was meant for to help burn the fat away, and it literally burns the fat away. Yeah, it makes you catch fire. Um, and there was a, there was a great cameo um, with the artist and the uh, Lehman and Gillery. Lehman and Gillery, that was really good. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, a setup issue, um, um, but but in a in a really 
it, it still had momentum. It, yeah. You know, it, it, it didn't feel a lot of a lot of setup issues <coughs> kind of have that kind of limp. Yeah. pace to it yeah. but this was going because Tony was like punching people yeah. in the face and things, things were happening yeah. and uh, we have a return of the you know divine egg or whatever yeah, like the, the yeah exactly and and that's that's what I was made me really happy after after two arcs where like you said we had forgotten about everything the writing in the sky because I remember the the first part with the writing in the sky and everything were the trades that you lent me yeah and when I mean when you get to that <laughs> issue you're like <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. and then then um, through through the other site where I do reviews of Entertainment Fuse, I read uh, which at the time was Player Affinity. I read Major League Chew, mm-hmm. and I was like, and I actually had to ask you, did I miss an issue? Yeah. Like it, like the world was going crazy from the shining <laughs> in the sky, and then all of a sudden, no one cares. Yeah, and then so now it's kind of coming full circle, and I, I was kind of wondering how this is going to read when the whole thing is collected in trades or on an omnibus. Um, uh, it, it, the arc is going to seem because to you know to us going month by month, it seems interminable. At sometimes, like come on, you know, get get back to the the fun stuff. Well, I guess just think about like the the trades of like why the last yeah. man. You yeah, know, it's, it's probably gonna, it's going to be about the same length. Yeah. And you know, you had a couple trades in there where you're like, all right, like yeah, this maybe is not as as moving as forward as relentlessly. As yeah, I definitely agree with you there, but I also feel like uh, BKV is a lot more meandering at times, yeah. whereas Layman has actually kept it going. Chu may have been in the hospital, but there was plenty of great stuff going on with Antonel. Um, the the first arc with uh, with her brother, the um, Tony Chow. Mm-hmm. No, is it no Chow Chu Chow Chu Chow Chu, where he goes after the guy who likes paintings or whatever. And and uh, I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was a fun arc, and, and Major League Chu was also a great arc. I love how he he ended up with their not only their their stats but also their powers, and he was able to to use that, but. What is this art called now? I'm this one's called Two Bad Apples. Two Bad Apples. No, it's just Bad Apples. That's the symbol. That's oh, that's the, the symbol. symbol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's the, the symbol in the sky. Yeah, on the uh, the church's book or whatever. I'm also... I'm, I'm going to have to highlight this when I when I um, do this in post, but I love how Rob's signature here is Rob! Exclamation point. Rob! <coughs> Rob! Rob! Actually, I guess he always does that. It says on the back, too. Yeah. That's the way to sign. That's a way to sign. That's a cool way to sign. All right, uh, on the next, on the other side of this pause, we'll see uh, Dan's pick. Yeah, please flip your record over to side B. With hydraulics. Doc, Doc, that tub of lard? Why are you grinding your teeth? <coughs> All right, Dan. Hey. <laughs> so, why don't you talk about your picks? Yeah, well, I'm going to talk about my not picks first. Okay. Um, first... Daredevil, Mark Wade, Chris Samney. I love, I love Samney's art. Like, what issue? What issue? This is uh, 22. 22. 22. Okay. Yeah, we're actually coming up on two years, actually. Huh. Well, they do- they double ship this stuff all the time. Uh, a lot of good stuff in here. Um, a lot of clever, clever writing by Wade. That like, I was lying down in bed and I was thinking about that part at the beginning with telling bills apart and everything. And I was like, did they go anywhere with that? And I was like, oh my god, they did go somewhere with that. It, it's like the the reviews I used to write on on Comic Vine would always focus on something like that and a sort of like these thematic ties throughout the entire book. And Wade is a good writer and he tries to do a lot of that. And then another book I didn't pick was FF. It has this great court, sort of pop art cover. The FF is dead uh, with old Johnny Storm, and it's got uh, the stuff with the. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can you can find a picture or you can even use the one that was there. But the Yancey Street Gang, the guys wearing the little uh, thing masks. That sounds hilarious, dummies. You dummy. And so that's getting neat, too. There's going to be some cool stuff going on in there, and they want to kill Doom, and that's weird. But the book that I picked, we talked about that already, actually. Saga 9. Very good. Very sharp book. Um, I was kind of, like, I guess I didn't realize that it was going to be not about Marco and Alana and, you know, all those guys, because I was like, oh, we got to resolve this. Like, uh, uh, Marco's father is dying, and, like, they're trapped with giant testicle monster on that planet, and Isabel's missing. And then it, we have sort of a, a, a break to hang out with the Will and Gwendolyn and um, Lion Cat and Slate Girl. I, I actually wasn't 100% sure where this was going to go because at the end of the last issue, we see Gwendolyn. Yeah, she shows up, yeah. But um, but as we mentioned before, um, Brian K. Vaughn can can sometimes take his time. Yeah, with a story. So I thought it would be um, completely within his usual uh, way of writing that we might not see Gwendolyn again for a few issues. Yeah, or they could have had a couple pages and then gone back to yeah, the, yeah. the other thing. Yeah, but this one, but but actually, you know, also not totally within his character 
to go focus on someone else for a whole issue. Mm-hmm. There were there were those times with uh, with uh, Why the Last Man where he would just focus on that that oh, uh, those two it. creatives, those two creatives that, that were always doing the plays and the other stuff. I hated them. I hated them. Um, so sometimes he would just focus on his sister. I guess um, I didn't hate them, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 so did you you only read it in trade? Uh, why? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I I could definitely see if I was getting it monthly, I would have been really annoyed. At, I mean, it, they were usually kind of funny in a corny way, but yeah, yeah. But but not but, not funny enough that I appreciated the break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this this was really good. I dug this. Um, <coughs> the, the the only actually actually the only weirdness I felt like. Uh, well, I, I suppose you're supposed to look at Gwendolyn as kind of like a. a, a like real badass, like kind of like she just gets things done. But you know, she she messes up the the spell and she doesn't kill the guy. And he's like, finish it. You know, like he's carrying the gun and she looks confused. And then all of a sudden, she just just blows him away. And I was like, I, I don't know that I buy that turn quite so fast. Um, you know, where she's just shooting that guy in the face. But I, I kind of like this this buddy cop movie that we got going with uh, with the Will and Gwendolyn. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be humorous. I thought I thought it was pretty um, a pretty fun playing with um, with the tropes when we start this issue. Scarlet's out there. Yeah. Um, so so um, we've got um, the will and and that girl that I mentioned um, back during that storyline when we were talking about our 2012 picks, and I mentioned that was that was one of the storylines that I that I enjoyed that he just smashes this guy's head to. Mm-hmm. Uh, to try and save this girl, and like you reminded me, he didn't actually succeed in saving her. Right. And so, the the trope that that BKV plays with is is Brian has a, has um the 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 stock resurrected, and and so you're reading and and he's he's going to save this girl, and then all of a sudden the stock's there, and she's like, they had like almost like this James Bond type of line, like like oh I heal fast or something like that, and then she's killing everybody, and then it turns out it's a dream. Yeah, I definitely, when I was reading that, I was like, what the hell? Like, this is really corny and cheesy and not at all like uh, like BKB's writing and, and the good stuff that I'm used to. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I, it was a great way for him to play around with us because as, as people yeah. who, who read comics all the time, you're used to people, you know, hey, if, if you didn't see the body cremated or whatever, they're yeah. probably going to come back. Also, also, can I take a moment to say "Mama Son" is a really funny play on words? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like uh, the Mama Son from a... From a like an Asian Bravo kind of thing, but um, anyway, so Lion Cat, a lot of lying. Yeah, Lion, Lion Cat. Uh, he was great because he he helps the Will see that Gwendolyn's lying, but then completely turns on his master, which I, I like. I, she's like, "How do you not kill him?" Yeah, he's so he's so committed to making sure people tell the truth that he doesn't even have um, faith, you know, uh, uh, loyalty to his master. I don't know if Lion Cat can control. It. I think Lion Cat just has to call out lying. It's it's possible. Yeah, I, I thought these uh these mole men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ugly. Yeah, the guy's face kind of looks like a, well, like an anemone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, the, the lances are cool. I don't know. It, actor, it, it's neat. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I th- and and I think that it introduces. Uh, so so Brian's really brought a huge change to the pace because um, this girl she can she can. Well, let me back up a minute. Remember um, a long time ago. Uh, and even Marco's mom yells at him for it. He gives his ring um, to Alana. Yeah. And that was Gwendolyn's ring. Yep. Well, apparently it's part of a set. And the slave girl can track it. And the slave girl can track it. So so whereas before they thought, hey, they're safe as long as they can get out into the middle of space because space is huge. I mean, that's the whole point of the black and all that in um, in Firefly. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they've got a way to track them. So yep. so where does Brian take this now so that this doesn't end in, like, you know, two more issues? <laughs> Uh, well, we'll see. We'll yeah. see. He's got what fifty one to go. Did, yeah, did he, he say it's gonna or he doesn't have a length on it. I, I I don't think he ever put a specific length on it, but I imagine it would be around the same comparable to why to why the last man. And, and that seems to be pretty typical for for any image comics that are gonna not ongoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or on, ongoing in the sense that they're way too long to be a miniseries. But but you know, Chu does that. Why did that? Uh, a lot of them seem to go for sixty. That seems to be a nice sweet spot. You know, yeah, gives you, you can, five, five years, so you can stay fresh in the story. You don't get tired of it. Your readers don't get tired of it. But uh, although it'll take a little longer because of the breaks that they take between arcs. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, we'll come back after this for the battle. All right. So we've got you. We've got Saga. Chaga. 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 That would be. An amazing 
completely impossible crossover. There was the part where Lion Cat was eating that mole man's face, that anemone <coughs> face. Now he knows everything about him. Yeah. <laughs> I kept, I kept, I kept wishing, even if it was just a dream sequence, yeah. that John Layman would have done that in Detective Comics. That we just had Batman just, just, just pound down on people. Just, yeah, just and he just wakes up like, oh my god, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it'd be it'd be actually kind of like the Bob's Burgers things with uh, with Archer yeah. uh, last week. Yeah, which was which is pretty fun. Yeah. But then again, Archer's a lot less um, self serious than than Detective Comics. So um I'm I'm as as we often did back when we would do this um um just by chatting mm-hmm. and then typing everything up. Mm-hmm. Um I'm I'm going to start out and and go for Saga. Go Pro Saga. Pro Saga. Um I'm going to say that um Chu while remaining dynamic, while Chu does take his revenge, well, not uh, indirect revenge because he's not actually going after the the vampire dude at the moment, but right. he he gets he he needs to go after someone and starts you know going after people. It's it's an intro to to this new arc. Um, it's kind of slow. The first one third of it is just him standing at a funeral while people talk to him and he remembers what happened before. Uh, a necessary and not a bad issue. Um, um, I gave it on uh, on Entertainment Fuse. I gave it an eight and a half out of ten. I, I enjoyed it a lot, um, but I feel like um, Saga does a much better job moving the story along. Okay. Um, you know, you you w- the will's just been kind of you know comatose almost ever since the stock um, the stock died, and so now he's 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 got a reason to get going. Mm-hmm. He's got a way to find them. Um, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I don't remember from the issue um, why he has to work with Gwendolyn. Like, I mean, I know she, I know that they, he was hired by her employers, but but there's I, I I think there's still some room there for some backstabbing or and you know they weren't completely honest with each other. You know that's why the lying cat had to come in there and kind of lying. give us some funny. Um, and of course, Fiona Staples amazing art, absolutely um, stunning. And uh, what do you think? Man, I honestly, you know, hearing you hearing you talk so much, yeah, about the first third of two, I'm like, that was the best part of that book. I mean, I know that that they're just kind of standing around, but it was emotional and it was good, and you know, it even starts to set up and and remind us that that Chu and Olive have no real relationship to each other. Like, I don't know. I thought that that was that, and and the revelation about the uh, the church were both great. That the stuff with the burning on fire, like that's that's not. Um, their strongest food related um, mystery or whatever but um, I don't know I, I liked the first third a lot and I thought that, that carried a lot more impact than most of the stuff in uh, in Saga I mean I mean the first bit in Saga like I said I, I was like what is this, this yeah, is, yeah. I, I mean in retrospect it's, it's cooler but yeah yeah, yeah it, was, it was about the first sixth sixth of Saga um, now uh, I did I did really enjoy the gags in in uh, Chew, um, I like that uh, that in in universe, uh, Layman and Guillory write a comic Super called Super Chogs. Super Chogs. Um, I like I, and like I said, I thought it was it was very um, Chew got what he needed to to do. He he and Colby got back together. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, um, been waiting for that reunion for a while. A little flirtation from the chief with Colby. Yeah, that was great. That was great. Um, I wonder who's gonna be uh, Poyo's new uh, teammate. At the USDA, now that Colby's not with him anymore, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm sure we'll see Poyo again. Poyo, I hope so. Poyo d- never dies. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Didn't he like yeah. fight out of hell or something? Yeah, like, yeah, that one shot was amazing. Yeah. Um, I guess, and and the thing, the thing that Chu does that's incomparable, really. Uh, it doesn't like Fiona Staples' art in Saga is amazing, and it must yeah. take her forever. Yeah. And as a consequence, you see it a lot. A lot of the backgrounds in in Saga are just bold colors. Yeah. You see that all the time, which yeah. is fine. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. But Chu, on the other hand, is so jam packed yeah. with art, like it's bursting with art. Yeah. And I don't know. I I I, I I'm the one who's like, I'm gonna bring Saga, and then I'm like, man, but I kind of really like Chu. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm. Hey, I, I'd love to win, so I'm really gonna go for Chew. It was it was almost it's almost a, it a toss up. I was just just trying to you know take a look at the you know what I thought Saga did so well, and, yeah. and I actually was gonna go with Saga at first, but then I, I thought no, I'd rather go with a more recent book, so it's yeah. more in my head. You yeah, know, I don't have to. Yeah. Um, the the feelings are a lot fresher. I just read it a couple days ago, so yeah. I mean, uh, 
I was going to say, it's a real Sophie's Choice, except it's not at all like a Sophie's <laughs> Choice. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, if, if you want to go with Chew, I want to go with Chew. All right. We'll go with Chew. Chew. Knocking out Saga this this by uh, bi-weekly uh, period. Not to say Saga was not amazing. Yeah. yeah Saga, Saga was, was, Saga was pretty good. So so I take I take the uh, the win in our first uh, video pile and uh, be back in a week or two as we do the next one. See you then. Pow.